everybody. Welcome back to the Season Butcher. Today we're going to make canned venison. I've got a lot of people over the years that have asked me, how, how do you do this? How do you actually make canned venison? And it's so simple. Shannon's going to give me an assist today and we're going to walk you through step by step from start to finish, the cuts of meat that we're using, the supplies that are needed. We're going to go through the entire process of how you can venison or wild game meat. Now here's the thing with tradition. A lot of us younger folks, maybe you weren't raised on canned venison. For those of you like that have grandparents, great grandparents, that was a mainstay part of what they did for sustenance when they were putting up meat. What a lot of you younger guys and gals don't realize is how good this stuff actually tastes. And so we're going to talk about that as we go through the video further. But for now what we want to do is get started in the process. Do me a favor here subscribe to the channel, like it, that really helps us out, and from there we're just going to get going. So today we've chosen the onion and bell pepper sausage seasoning from the Season Butcher. This is what we're going to put in the jars, you'll see the exact amount here shortly. Alright, so the cuts of meat that we've chosen for canning today is out of the hind quarter. Um, you actually can see that particular kill that we're editing on the channel. It's the Missouri kill. But what we're going to do is we're going to just quickly take off some of the fat, some of the silver skin, and then we're going to cut them into chunks. So we're going to look roughly one inch by one inch chunks is what we're looking for. So we're going to take this entire bucket of meat here that you see and we're going to chunk that up into one inch cubes and that's what's going to go in the jars. Okay so what we're going to do is get all this chunked up and we're looking at roughly that size of a piece. We just know that it cooks better when canning you don't want to just throw a big old hunk in the in the jar. And then what I'm doing is I'm going through and inspecting each piece real quickly we don't want to trim too much because we will waste it. You will notice that with the final product, if there's any tallow slash fat or the sinew, it will actually float to the top of the jar in the canning process. And you'll be able to scoop that off with a spoon before you actually serve it or use it to cook with whatever you're making. Hi, I'm Shannon. So I'm helping Jim out today, or he's helping me, and we are making our canned venison. So it's a step-by-step -step process, but we do need to get the lids into our simmering pan of water. I just drop them in. It's not boiling, and you just drop them in, and then they just can simmer and keep warm until we are ready to use them. That way it just activates the sealing agent on the ring. Okay, I'm going to let you know what we have for supplies here handy. We have the rings and we are using pint sized jars today and we have sanitized them and I washed these also with the hot soapy water. The jars I sanitized with in the dishwasher so they are ready to go and then we have the lids simmering so they will all be ready. Other supplies we need is a jar puller. If you don't have one, you'll need to use pot holders. But this is very handy when the, the when they're all finished, you will see why. And then you also need, because part of the steps is when we're putting the meat in the jars, sometimes you'll get it messy on the top. So have it just a handy um, paper towel dampened so that you can clean that off before you put the rings on. And that is simple. That's it. Okay, so we have the meat chunked up in our cubes and now it's time to just put it in the jars. And when you add it to the jars, you just press it down. You can either use your fingers or if you prefer, you can use a spatula. Just pack it in there. You want it to get about an inch from the top. And we just keep adding our meat in here. And then the next step would be the seasoning. Okay, so we have the jars packed now full of the meat. And now we're going to add our seasoning. And we're going to do one teaspoon of the seasoning. We have, we are using pint jars, and so we're just going to sprinkle the seasoning right on the top. You do not need to stir it in. It'll take care of itself once we put it on the lids and get it in the pressure cooker. 
So just a teaspoon I'm putting, sprinkling it right on the top, and then you'll be done. So just to recap what we have done, we sanitized all the jars, we chopped up the meat into cubes, then we packed the jars full. Like I said, you can either pack it with your fingers or if you prefer, you can use a spatula. And then we sprinkled the seasoning in. Now remember I told you about the paper towel? This is the part that you wanna make sure that the, the rims of the jars don't have any, like right there. You want to get that little meat down in there. Otherwise, the seal cannot form a proper seal on there. So I just, just simply wipe it down. Nothing fancy or special about what I'm doing, just to clear that rim off. Jars are packed with their meat, and then we just put the lids on. The lids have been simmering in the hot water for at least 10 minutes. They can just stay in there till you're ready to use them. You don't want it boiling, but you just have the lids simmering or in that hot water till you're ready to use it. Then you have the, the rings. Now when you put the rings on, just put them on, and you don't want to crank on them real tight, just till they're snug. And that is our last step. So we'll just put all the lids on, then you put the rings on. All right, so we are ready to put the jars in the pressure cooker. I have a pressure canner. I like to use this little rack in here because it will keep the jars from being right directly on the heat. Now, just to recap, all we have in the jar is meat and the seasoning. No broth added because it will make its own broth while it's cooking. So then we snug this down and we just set the jars in my pressure canner. And I don't, I just put them in here. My animal holds seven jars. I don't, I just kind of space them out so that they're not touching each other the best that you can. And then I add the water. I don't dump the water right on the jars, but you want to add the water so that you are just over halfway up the jars the best you can. This way you have enough water in here that it won't boil dry on you and run out of water. So I just need to add a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just adding the water, looking in there to where it goes up. Just over, about halfway. All right, after we put the jars in the canner and have added water to the, just about halfway up the jar, it's time to put the lid on, and I always double check the vent hole just to make sure that it's clear. I just hold it up to the light, peek through it. You can see through it, it's good to go. Then, I just position, this is truthfully is the trickiest part of the whole process, is getting the lid on the canner. Put that on, seal it down, then I turn on my burner, and I wanna get it going right away, so I'm gonna do on about a nine, about a nine to high, medium to medium high. Then we have the rocker, and you're gonna cook this pressure cooker at 15 pounds for 90 minutes once this gets to, to rocking. Okay, so this is the waiting time now. You just let it go, listen for it, and then we're gonna adjust the heat as it as it goes on. So right now we're just waiting. Okay, so while we are waiting for this batch's pressure cooker to start rocking, we have a batch that we've already made, and I just want to tell you some things that we do with our canned venison. So it's so handy. So it's on days like you really don't want to cook, ladies, you can cook. Just grab one of these, pop the top off, add a can of cream of mushroom soup, put it in there, stir it up, boil some red, some baby red potatoes, and you are good to go. Or if you like noodles, you can put it over noodles, or you can put it over rice. It's so simple and so easy to do. And I know um, you could also add this to stew. You could make a stew with it also. You, your meat is already cooked and you just need to add your potatoes and your carrots and your celery. Whatever you like to do for a stew, you have your meat ready and it's easy. So, Hi everybody, so we are needing to go to plan B. My big pressure canner, which holds seven jars, decided not to work today. I'm going to need to buy a new gasket ring because the steam is leaking out from underneath the rim, um, the lid. So at least now you get to see what this jar puller is used for because the jars are hot. So we're going to go and use my small pressure canner. I will just need to 
wait, it's only going to hold three jars instead of my seven, but it'll do the same thing. So again, we put the jars in the pan. We're going to add our water just about halfway up the jars to create that pressure. So we have that halfway up the jars. Put our lid on. Like I said, this is the trickiest part. Put the lid on, seal it, turn the burner on to high to get it started. And then we have our little rocker. Now, if you have the fancier pressure cookers that have the rocker that has the, um, if you can zoom in, it has like five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds on it. You would want to do this recipe at 15 pounds. Pint jars are 75 minutes. If you have a larger family and you want to do quart jars, then it would be 90 minutes at 15 pounds. So now we are going to have a small rocker, and once this gets going, I will show you how that works, but just going to have a steady rocker on it the whole time. You adjust the temperature as needed just to keep it a steady rock. All right, back to plan B. This is going quicker because I think the jars were hot already. This, you can see that this button's going to pop up with steam, and then pretty soon the shaker is going to start to go back and forth. So you can see that it's working good. The steam is releasing. There's one button up. Pretty soon the rocker will start. And then you need to adjust the temperature. You don't want it to sound like it's a space shuttle trying to take off. You'll see, it's gonna, we need to keep it a steady, even rock and not like it's gonna skip off of the pan. Starting to rock right now. So now's when you wanna adjust the temperature so we don't have it like jump off of there. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it down till we get to a even, this is the tricky part now with this particular pressure canner. We have to um, adjust the temperature and get just the right temperature to keep this at an even rock. You don't want to always have to play with your temperature because right now it's a little bit fast for me. So I, I turn it down. We just got to let it catch up. Once you get it set, you can just walk away, not walk away, walk away, but you don't have to touch the temperature control. All right, we are at a pretty even rock right now. I'll just keep watching it here. So I am going to start the timer on it for 75 minutes. And I will just try to keep this at an even rocker the whole time that it's cooking. And then that should be 75. There we go. Start. Okay, we have 75 minutes on the clock. It's at a nice, pretty even peel. We'll just, I have the temperature turned down to almost medium at this point. So I'll just keep an eye on this and listen for it. That's kind of your best bet, listening and you want that even sound, at least with this type of pressure canner. And then you just wait it out. Our pressure cooker has been gently rocking now for the last 75 minutes and so it's time now all we need to do is take it off from the heat source gently and then you just have to let it sit and let the pressure release on its own we do not do a quick release pressure so in case you didn't know that's where you would take that off and it would steam up but we let the pressure drop of its own and we'll know it's done my little, that little button will go down, the rocker will stop. We just let everything sit now until everything is calm. And then we can open it up and see what we have. All right, so the pressure button just went down. So now we can take off the rocker. I always like to do this real quick just to make sure if there was any pressure that it would release. If I take that off, there's no steam coming out. So it is depressurized inside. So it is now safe to open. So I will crack it open. It's still going to be very warm, so be careful with that. I'm going to grab my jar puller. And I come in and I just gently lift them out. And now the fun part is, especially if you have kids, they like to listen for the pops of the jar. Sometimes they'll pop right away. Other times they take a little longer. 
They may have already popped inside here too, so you may not hear them, but if you hear, we're listening for three little pops. And when you hear them, you know that they are sealed completely and we can let it go. All right, so we have taken the jars out of the pressure canner. We are just now waiting for them to pop, I call it. That's when it's sealed. And um, sometimes it takes an hour. You just have to be patient and wait. I would give it an hour. And then once they're cooled down, you can test it by just gently pressing the center. Right now, leave them be though, because they're still, maybe they're still sealing if they haven't already popped. I have not heard a pop yet. But you can test it later when these are cool. Just gently push down in the center. If it's firm, they've sealed. If there's some give, then they have not sealed. And you can do supper with that one because it's ready to go. So this is just one more way that you can go from field to table.